intimated that this is all some kind of a new scam. I don't care if you believe me or not believe me, my lifestyle will prove my authenticity and my action. But if you had, you would lie about it, correct? Correct. Did you kill Susan Berman? No. Nothing more frustrating than having your, your daughter marry you know, while you're in prison. I respect the verdict of the jury, but I don't agree with it. Do you believe in the justice system? None of them really are serving as much time as we. Uh, I've seen men come and go. And a small group of prosecutors, for whatever reason, bend the rules to win at all costs. And as to your first aspect, uh, I decline um, your invitation to reduce bail. The bail amount for many high-profile cases is set unaffordably high, one that seems almost unrealistic. The goal of setting amounts this high is to make it challenging for the defendant to secure bail, thus making it less likely for them to escape prison time until their court hearing. Let's look at the top highest bail amounts ever paid in history. Barry Minko, $1.5 million. Minko started and ran one of the most well-known Ponzi schemes during the 1980s. Minko did it all through his carpet cleaning company, which turned out to be quite phony. They weren't really making money from carpet cleanings. Instead, Minko had the company as a front and made money through several illegal revenue streams. He was 16 years old when the company started and it made him a mega millionaire. Though it all backfired when he was caught and sentenced to 25 years for fraud. He spent seven years in jail and upon release, it seemed like he was completely renouncing his criminal behavior by using his expertise as an expert at catching fraud and his newfound path as a church pastor. Minko was not really a changed man as it was found out that he was stealing from the church and his parishioners on top of several other illegal acts that landed him right back in prison. An apology to the people that he hurt. He used the congregation, the people. He developed relationships with people. I would have liked to have seen some remorse and restitution. So that um, he can benefit himself in the long run. He created a, a, like a, a Ponzi scheme of, of fraudulent documents. He said he had millions and millions of dollars of these restoration contracts. I spent 87 months in prison. And then used these contracts for work to be performed. The South Central Los Angeles gang members. But my gut was worrisome because I was worried that he had a personality type of all sociopaths. My roommate was in for murder. I didn't get away with anything. I paid a heavy price for my crime. I actually had great hopes for him. I truly wanted him to be reformed. I don't care if you believe me or not believe me. My lifestyle will prove my authenticity and my action. Dennis Kozlowski, $10 million. Kozlowski was in charge of Tyco International Limited, an international company focusing on security products and services where hundreds of millions were allegedly stolen from the company. Kozlowski was charged with enterprise corruption and grand larceny. He claimed that the money was approved as part of his compensation package from the company, and maybe it had been, but the courts found him guilty, and he was conditionally released at the beginning of 2014 after serving a good portion of his sentence in prison. None of them really are serving as much time as me. Uh, I've seen men come and go. I couldn't go to the cafeteria. The food was brought to us. When I started up in uh, Exeter, New Hampshire, Tyco was about a $20 million company. There's nothing more frustrating than having your, your daughter marry you know, while you're in prison. Uh, when I left, uh, actually, Tyco was about a $40 billion company. It was formerly known as The Box. But I, I am with murderers, I am with rapists, I am with people who shot people. Robert Durst, $3 billion. Convicted slayer and American real estate heir Robert Allen Durst is known for the slayings of three individuals. His first wife, Kathleen McCormick, his friend Susan Berman, and his neighbor, Morris Black. In 2004, Durst testified that he had accidentally fired a gun at the elderly woman while acting in self-defense. He stated that he had panicked after realizing what had happened and admitted to dismembering Black's corpse before leaving town. After he was arrested, he posted the initial bail that was set and fled, failing to show up to his court hearing. A little less than two months later, he was arrested for shoplifting. However, Durst was acquitted of the slaying based on lack of forensic evidence, but was arrested for jumping bail, failing to show up in court on the date of his trial, and for tampering with evidence. A $3 billion was set by Texas District Judge Susan Chris. In late 2021, Durst was convicted for the first-degree slaying of Susan Berman. In October, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He has also been linked to the disappearances of three teenage girls. 
Lynn Schultz, Karen Mitchell, and Kristen Modafferi. Shortly after being sentenced, he was charged with the disappearance of McCormick, but passed away on January 10, 2022, before a trial date could be scheduled. Was she cold to the touch? Was she warm to the touch? Could you tell? I put my hand over her face. It was, I put my hand on her face, and it was cold. It might be Susan's handwriting. I do not specifically see anything. To spend Christmas with Susan Barman. Yes. No, she was not breathing. So how can her breath be cold when she's dead? She's a stiff. Did you kill Susan Berman? No. Describing the fact that I was going to arrive that evening. But if you had, you would lie about it, correct? Correct. And it felt cold. Correct. Um, do you see any notation on the 22nd, Mr. Durst? Her breath felt, her face felt cold. She's dead. To see if she was breathing. See if I could feel breath. Michael Milken, $250 million. In the 1980s, Michael Milken was charged with securities fraud, insider trading, filing false tax returns, and mail fraud. Before his arrest, he was well known for his work as a philanthropist and chair of the Milken Institute. He was also an executive at Drexel Burnham Lambert, dealing with corporate financing and mergers and acquisitions. At the time that he was charged, he was the highest paid man on Wall Street, which gave him the means to be able to flee. Therefore, his bail was set at $250 million. In 1989, Milken was indicted and pled guilty to securities fraud charges. He spent almost two years in prison. He was banned from the securities industry, but received a presidential pardon in 2020 from President Trump. Mike Milken, who's gone around and done an incredible job for the world. Uh, seemed like a very nice person, don't know him, but he suffered greatly. He paid a big price. I don't know him very well. I met him a couple of times. He was on for a short while of The Apprentice years ago. But he's done an incredible job. And uh, yeah, these are all people that there's a long time to go. You have to see the recommendations. I rely on recommendations. Paid a very tough price. But Suge Knight, $10 million. Suge Knight was at the forefront of several emerging rap industries in the 90s. He has had trouble with law enforcement for a long portion of his life. His most recent arrest in 2015 brought him out in the news once again. His hit-and-run incident left one man lifeless and another in the hospital. The bail was originally set at $25 million and then lowered to $10 million. Knight has gone through several lawyers during the trial and his health issues have come up many times. Which is my father and uh, we just want justice for him and we want peace as the trial moves forward. I think uh, hopefully next week there's one 36401 Count one, murder, count two, attempted murder. We invite everybody to definitely come out. The focus is definitely the victim. Yes, sir, Your Honor. You're charged in the information TA. I'm just happy that the case is moving forward. To all charges, sir, how do you plead? Uh, not guilty, Your Honor. You deny all the enhancements. Yes, sir, Your Honor. We definitely, our focus is justice for our father. After Floyd Mayweather wins again, I think he's gonna come right into the rescue. Various enhancements are alleged. At this time, it's especially way further reading information from state rights. Yes, sir. I think we're going to have very good luck. Murder count three, felony hit and run. And I did cite in uh, Foster and Mendoza. I think we will be able to make bail. And as to your first aspect, uh, I decline um, your invitation to reduce bail. Dimitri Firtash, $174 million. The U.S. had been monitoring and investigating Ukrainian businessman Dimitri Firtash since 2006 for bribery and the formation of a criminal organization. In March 2014, Firtash was arrested at the request of American authorities, but was released from prison after posting $174 million bail. It was clear to me that this case was political. Justice would treat me fairly from the start. All that I have to say is that I'm pleased with the outcome because the U.S. is the U.S. But in any case, I knew I'd done nothing wrong. That's why, unfortunately, I had mixed feelings. But I was really worried and afraid and was prepared for any decision. I sincerely believe that Austrian the amount set a record in the history of Austria. After the money for bail was transferred, Firtash was held until investigators could confirm the legality of the origins of the money. Raj Rajaratnam, $100 million. In 2009, former hedge fund manager Raj Rajaratnam was charged with 14 counts of conspiracy charges and securities fraud. He was found to have made over $50 million from illegal trades. 
The judge overseeing the case set Roger Atnam's bail at $100 million, $2.5 million of which was paid in cash, while the remainder was paid in securities and property. Do you still profess your innocence or do you accept your conviction? I believe that law and order is extremely important for any civic society. I respect the verdict of the jury, but I don't agree with it. Three years after my case, in the same circuit, the Southern Circuit, and the same wiretaps, another jury found the defendant right. not guilty. In the same stocks, with the same cooperating witness, and the reason was... And a small group of prosecutors, for whatever reason, bend the rules to win at all costs. And point fingers at somebody else and they let you go. I had that offer. They charge you. They want high profile guys recanted his testimony against me and said, I called Raj to find out what he was thinking. And the singular reason for his change in testimony... Yeah, because a unique thing of the US justice system is... That the cooperating witness, the star cooperating witness... And you can negotiate... Was because he was no longer... In mid-2011, he was sentenced to 11 years in jail for his crime, which is known to be one of the biggest cases of insider trading in the history of the U.S. He was also charged with a combined total of $150 million as a criminal and civil penalty fine. Tiffany Lee, $66 million. 31-year-old Chinese-born Tiffany Lee was charged with ordering her boyfriend, an accomplice, to slay 27-year-old Keith Green over a custody battle for their children. A week after Green's body was found 80 miles away from the restaurant where he had agreed to meet Lee, Lee and her boyfriend, Kaveh Bayat, were arrested as suspects. Lee's bail was set at $66 million. Lee posted the bail in the form of cash and assets from property bonds in April 2017, after spending 10 months in jail. Lee was acquitted first, and the charges against Bayat were dropped after the jury deadlocked over their decision for him. The only person who remained jailed for the crime was Olivier Adela, Lee and Bayat's ex-bodyguard and personal trainer, who was believed to be deeply connected with the homicide. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.